Hello, this is Dr. Moral El Ramahi reporting to you on UR 2021 from Cleveland, Ohio for Room Now. Dr. Philip Mees presented results of a phase two trial OP0227 at UR 2021 that shows the efficacy and safety of an oral tyrosine kinase inhibitor or TIC inhibitor called Ducravacidinib. Its efficacy was shown for the treatment of active psoriatic arthritis. So as a review, ducravacidinib is a novel oral drug that selectively inhibits TIC2. It has downstream inhibitory effects on IL-23, IL-12, and type 1 interferon pathways. In two recent phase 3 clinical trials evaluating patients with moderate to severe psoriasis, ducravacidinib was efficacious and in fact outperformed Pramilast or Tesla in terms of PASI 75 response. So this trial presented was a double-blinded placebo-controlled trial that randomized 203 patients with active psoriatic arthritis equally to ducravacidinib 6 milligrams, ducravacidinib 12 milligrams, or placebo. Eligible patients had a psoriatic arthritis diagnosis for at least six months, met CASPAR criteria, failed up to one TNF inhibitor, and failed or were intolerant to at least one conventional synthetic DMARD, an NSAID, or a glucocorticoid. So 65% of patients were using conventional synthetic DMARDs in this trial, and 16% had an inadequate response to TNF inhibitors. Baseline demographics and clinical characteristics were similar across the groups with a mean age of 50 years old, mean psoriatic arthritis duration since diagnosis of four and a half years, and moderate disability at baseline per the Health Assessment Questionnaire Disability Index scores. The primary endpoint was achievement of ACR20 response at week 16. Both ducravacidinib groups demonstrated statistically significant ACR20 responses versus placebo, 53% versus 63% versus 32% respectively across the ducravacidinib six milligram group, 12 milligram group, and placebo. ACR20 responses were similar in patients with and without a prior history of TNF inhibitor use. Achievement of ACR50 and ACR70 responses at week 16 were also significantly higher with the ducravacidinib groups versus placebo. A greater proportion of patients in the ducravacidinib groups achieved enthesitis resolution by week 16 as measured by the enthesitis indices and dactylitis resolution was also achieved by week 16 in 77 to 79% of patients in the ducravacidinib groups compared to 60% in the placebo groups. Achievement in minimal disease activity and improvements in DAPSA and PASDAS were significantly greater as well in both ducravacidinib groups compared to placebo by week 16. Overall, the study showed that ducravacidinib was well tolerated. The most common adverse events were mild to moderate in severity and included nasopharyngitis, sinusitis, headache, rash, URI, bronchitis, and diarrhea. Notably though, there were no serious adverse events, including serious infections. There were no clinically meaningful changes also in terms of laboratory parameters during the trial. So in summary, the efficacy of ducravacidinib versus placebo was demonstrated across all ACR domains and enthesitis endpoints with a similar safety profile as observed in phase three trials in patients with psoriasis. And there was a poster presented on those phase three trials in, in psoriasis, poster 1042. So I'm looking forward to more trials to come assessing ducravacidinib efficacy in rheumatic diseases. This is Morala Ramahe for RoomNow. Be sure to check out roomnow.com for more coverage on UR 2021.